wonder are Newcastle more likely to potentially slip up? Because their next few fixtures are difficult. This video is being brought to you with thanks to Surfshark. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to browse websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Surfshark allows you to virtually travel the world with just the tap of a finger. As an example, we here in Ireland can afflix, uh, afflix, afflix, what is afflix? We here in Ireland can watch other countries' Netflix libraries, unlock UK services such as BBC iPlayer, and of course, that all important Spanish The Zone account for football. Surfshark keeps you safe and secure by covering up everything that you do online. When your device connects to the internet, all this information is, in a way, blurred out. This is particularly effective when you're out and about on public Wi-Fi, maybe you're in college or at a cafe. It keeps your information safe and secure from hackers. With a surf, with a surf shark, just ask surf shark. Just here, have a surf shark, Johnny. Mildred Surfshark. Surfshark allow you to use unlimited devices on just one subscription, meaning if you so wish, you can grant access to your friends and family. On top of that, Surfshark offer a 30 day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, they refund you. It is that simple. Simply scan the QR code on your screen right now, or use the link in the description, putting in the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. So a couple of transfer stories that I didn't mention in the latest video I uploaded to YouTube, and one of them really made me fell off my chair with laughter. Now this time last year, this transfer link probably wouldn't be as ridiculous as it is now, but according to Fajajes, who, as we know, are full-time residents on Bullshit Island, in our humble opinion, uh, they have said that Liverpool are interested in... Dot, 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 Tammy Abraham. You what? Yeah, I said it. Tammy Abraham. They said, transfer windows yet to open, but it hasn't stopped speculation from churning out rumours. The latest sees Tammy Abraham being linked with a move to Liverpool. Fakahe say Liverpool are among six clubs who are looking to sign the former Chelsea striker this summer. It's been claimed that the move behind the Reds' interest is to replace the departing Roberto Firmino. I mean... Come on, Fakahes, be better. Now, if you want to read this for yourself, the story is on the Echo, so go and have a look at it. But yeah, look, don't, don't see this happening. Last summer, you know, there were conversations and we had them on the show. Where are we going to look at it? Tammy Abraham? Is it something that Liverpool should be looking at? But we've brought in Darwin Nunes. We've brought in Cody Gakpo. We also have Diogo Jota. We have Mohamed Salah. Uh, we have Lucho Diaz. We are more than covered, in my opinion. So I don't think we need to bring in anyone. And I think that them talking about Liverpool looking to bring in uh, Tammy Abraham is, um, well... As I said, I don't believe it to be true. But then, maybe let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think we need a striker? Do you think it's the right fit? We don't need attackers. Can we stop, please? I'm with you. We don't. We're pretty well stocked in that area. And then, of course, you add into that that we have Ben Doak. We have uh, Cade Gordon uh, and some other young, bright attacking prospects as well as Harvey Elliott and a few others. So, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think we need to bring in... Uh, I don't think we need to bring in any attackers, let alone when we're probably going to have to spend a lot of money to get the midfield right and to potentially get the defence sorted. So, yeah, it just seems like absolute nonsense to me. Anyway, let's move on to Alexis McAllister and the reason why we're all here tonight. Because shit's getting tasty. And it is getting tasty, right? So... Uh, the Anfield Agenda Twitter account, you know, a much maligned, very fantastic, absolutely tickety-boo, blue tick and all, don't you know, sir, Twitter account, which you should be following if you're not. We have said Liverpool are planning to give Alexis McAllister the number 10 shirt, the same shirt that he is wearing at Brighton. And that makes sense, right? Makes sense. And that comes from at Dario Ole. Um, makes sense because we have a number 10 shirt to give out. Nobody's wearing the number 10 shirt. But... Fabrizio Romano and a few others have been speaking. He said Liverpool are in advanced negotiations for Alexis McAllister. Liverpool remain the front runners, but they've already uh, made the proposal to the player. Now they need to make the proposal to the players' club. Chelsea are also interested, but he's not seen as a priority for Chelsea. Um, and then the last bit that comes from the mirror, I think it was David Maddock, if I'm not mistaken. And again, you can find this on the Anfield Agenda Twitter account. Alexis McAllister is believed to be ready to commit his future to Liverpool Football Club. Talks are a long way down the line around a £70 million deal. And that's where I wanted to start tonight's conversation. How do we feel about that number? By the number, I mean £70 million. But if you want to tell me how you feel about the 10, have at it as well. I think this is... 
this is certainly the one we're most furthest along on. This looks like, because you know, normally we get to divide, right? We'll have the English journalists saying one thing. We'll have the, you know, whether it be South American or European based journalists saying something else. But I think everybody seems to be in unison with regards to our, uh, our determination to get McAllister over the line. Now, I need your help. As you know, I like a little bit. So I was flicking around the other night and I was, I was flicking through and I was seeing a game and Argentinos Jr., Alexis McAllister's former club, were playing. So I decided, lad, let's stick a bet on there. So I stuck a bet on. I was paying attention to it. I seen a scorer in the game, number four, called McAllister. Is that his brother? Is his brother playing for the same club now? Should we be keeping an eye on his brother? If that's the case, because I know Alexis McAllister was like a four or seven million pound signing from Argentinos Jr., but... If, he, if he's got a little bro there or an older bro, I don't know. But, you know, number four and he scored. So let me know. what, what, what Should we be looking at this kid? Should we keep an eye on him? Or is it just a coincidence? I don't know. I wouldn't imagine there's many McAllisters in uh, in Argentina, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, right. So Zavani said, I think 60 million is more realistic. But if it means we get him, then I'm happy. Uh, G Dem said, no way. 50 if he didn't win the World Cup. 60 now is his max. Oren said 60 should be the number. 60 with add on said Owen McPartland. Uh, Don said, way too high in my view. I'd be 55 million tops, to be honest. Yeah, this is. Um, I was expecting you to go with this, to be fair. I was expecting you to, um, to agree on the 60. That's the number I feel comfortable with. But, I mean, I'm not arsed if we pay 70. <laughs> I won't lie to you. I'm not arsed. At this point, I'm sold on the, on the kid. Um, so, yeah, be it 60, 70. Just get him. Just get him because I think he is, I think he's incredibly good. And I think he's an incredible good fit. Incredibly good fit. Um, a few more bits on Mason Mount and we'll get to that in a while. A little bit of Manuel Lagarde as well. But I mean, I'd be very, very surprised if we just pay 70 and just, just don't even try and barter it down. But maybe, maybe that's Brighton's number. Because there were reports over the past few weeks that seventy million for him, seventy million for Moses Caicedo, or Moise, excuse me, Caicedo was the uh, was the number. So let's wait and see. It is his brother, isn't it? There you go. It is his brother. It's weird that I, f I find out so many little things like that from just browsing through, having a bet and stuff, and just go, oh, McAllister, that rings a bell. His brother is actually called Kevin. I mean, you could you? I mean, if I said to you, Kevin McAllister. What country is he from? None of you were saying Argentina. Like, let's be honest, we're going Scotland, Ireland, England, maybe Wales, but certainly not Argentina. That's nuts. Just pay the 70 and get it done, said Kochi. Uh, we really need a centre back, said Hannah. Right, Don said, okay, I have to put something negative in here, but we're suddenly out of a Garte race. I'm beginning to wonder if FSG will sign anybody of note this summer. You've helped me out massively there, but I'm going to slip right into the Garte talk now in a second. I'm also fully starting to get behind the the Zerbi propaganda train as a future potential Liverpool manager. Got to watch how he gets on, but I am very, very fucking impressed with what I'm seeing from him as well. Chelsea could look to beat Liverpool to the signing of Alexis McAllister by offering Brighton Levi Colwell on a permanent transfer as part of a swap deal. Yeah, here's the thing though. Who in their right fucking mind now is going to go to Chelsea at this moment in time? They are... What, middle of the road? No European football at all next season. A new manager coming in. At least 10 players to be moved on. Um, And again, Bowley can't continue to take the piss with what he's spending. He has spent 600 million quid. They need to start balancing the fucking books. Or they're going to have some issues. So I don't believe that's the case. And also, and I can't say this clearly enough. He wants to come to Liverpool. So, Chelsea can do one on that one. Top four. Let's talk top four for a few minutes because Manchester United just about got over the line at home, beating Wolves, and the way the fucking media are reporting, you'd swear they just slayed Manchester City or, you know, a title rival. They've beaten a very, very out-of-form Wolves at home and made hard work of it. But they have some... Do you know what? I wonder are Newcastle more likely to potentially slip up because their next few fixtures are difficult. They've got Brighton, who are absolutely flying at the minute and hunting down the Europa place. They've got, I think, is it Chelsea, if I'm not mistaken? I know I know there's some diff, or is it Leeds? I know that Newcastle have some difficult fi fixtures to come up, and we need one of them to fuck up. Leicester, is it? We need one of them to shit the bed, so 
we're running out of games though, right? Three games to go. But if if, if Brighton get at and off Newcastle, ooh, lads, it's squeaky bum time and we could have a very interesting last day of the season. Leicester home and Chelsea away. Ooh. I was thinking the same. Brighton beats Newcastle and Chelsea ties. Ooh. We need to improve our goal difference as well because we're behind Newcastle and goal difference. That game's huge. The Brighton-Newcastle game is going to be huge. We hit form two weeks too late. I said it to you at the time, Ella. I said, and go back and watch, 73 points. I said to you, I think 73 points is going to be the number for Champions League. And then we had... I think the draw against Arsenal, if I'm not mistaken, was the one that made we couldn't get 73. 71 was the max we could get. And I still stand over 73 being the number. So once we didn't mathematically have a chance to get 73, my my uh, belief went downhill. Uh, need Brighton win and Leicester draw plus win all our games. Yeah, I mean, we've got to take care of business tomorrow and that is not going to be an easy game. I'm expecting... A really, really fast, aggressive start from Leicester tomorrow. Uh, if we beat Leicester tomorrow, they're down, in my opinion, says Monkey Duffy. Well, Everton lost, so it's still possible. You know, Everton were beaten 3-0 today by, or yesterday, sorry, or whatever it was. by Man- Was it today or yesterday? By Manchester City, I think it was today. Um, so, yeah, they're in trouble as well. Who do we think's most likely to have this wobble? If somebody's to drop out of the top four, who are we saying? Because I was always thinking United, but now I'm thinking maybe Newcastle. I'm thinking Newcastle at this point with their fixtures. Um, the one thing Newcastle have for them, of course, is that brilliant atmosphere and crowd up at St. James's Park. Um, so they do have that going for them. But, you know, difficult fixtures, particularly when you see what Brighton did today and how um, how impressive they were. So Connor says Newcastle, Corrin said Newcastle. Um, if anyone's dropping out of top four, it'll be Newcastle said Monkey Duffy. Both of them said Matthew. United said Jamie. David says Newcastle. Andy said Newcastle. Ella said United. Toyra Newcastle. I think Newcastle is the majority of your answers. Yeah, LFC fan. G Dem. Matt. Um, Oren. It would be a very anticlimactic season for the Geordies or for United fans if they um. If they didn't get top four, like top four looked like nailed on, nailed on, like for, for both of them two weeks ago. I can't believe we even have a chance still. It's mental to me that we're even in this uh, conversation. Remember, you have to get topless if you win top four. Is it weird that I was actually thinking about that last night Um, and how I do it? So I haven't forgotten. Don't worry. Matthew said we don't deserve it. See, I, I've been saying that as well. But ultimately, the league table doesn't lie. So I, I guess we can feel like we don't deserve it because we've had a very, very terrible first two-thirds of the season. But, you know, six wins in a row, if we can make that nine before the season ends or is it seven and make it ten, whichever way it is, I mean, can we say we don't deserve it then? I think it'd be even heartbreak if we finished perfect for the season and still came up short, as in perfect for the end of the season. This is my tradition for every stream, but if United get Champions League over us, we still beat them 7-0. We did. We did, my friend, yes. But 7-0 and them not. 7-0, look, even if they don't get it, if we get it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, what will they have then? We won the League Cup, fair enough. Not, not undermining their League Cup victory, but... You know, if we can get top four this season after the shit show we've had, I will be um I will count that as a pretty good season. If Newcastle had to go to Stamford Bridge needing a win, is nervy. Yeah, it is. Only problem is Chelsea obviously have nothing to play for then, other than I guess pride. I hate last days of the season. I don't mind them if we've got our, you know, season sorted and it's a it's a farewell at home. A good result and the players doing a lap of honour and the Golden Samba being awarded and all that stuff. I don't mind them, but it's going to be nervy like if there's something on the line. Because we, we don't have positive experiences with last days of the season, right? It usually doesn't go our way. Who do you hope get relegated? Um, Everton and Leicester. I'd like Leeds to stay up. I can see a loss to Southampton in the last day costing us top four. No. No, no, I can't see that happening. 
if we go into that last day needing a win, we get the win. I'm not saying other results will go our way, but I can't see a last day of the season where we don't get the win. I think we win that game like something mad, like 5-2 or something like that. It's sad, traditional big teams going down. It is. It is sad. Um, Forest, I think, will stay up. Everton, I'd still say Everton have a very, very good chance to stay up. I, I wouldn't say that they're, they're absolutely nailed on or anything like it. I think they could get one win and maybe that'll scrape them up. I think Leicester, you know, tomorrow's huge for Leicester and for us. It is uh, It's going to be very interesting tomorrow night. I'm expecting lots of twists and turns. So they're on the same points. There you go. Man United in Newcastle. Newcastle have 22 goals better than United. Um, cool. Yeah, so... Yeah, you can count that as an extra point pretty much for Newcastle with the goal difference being as it is. Uh, Mr. Apple Crumble reckons Southampton obviously are already down, so Leicester and Leeds to go down. I think Big Sam beats West Ham next week as they're on the beach. Yeah, and also could have the uh, Europa Conference League final to look forward to as well. So let's be honest, if you're David Moyes and West Ham, I mean, you, you will hear the whole integrity talk all week from, from people that are in the relegation zone that wants West Ham to put out a strong team and blah, blah, blah. But fuck that. If I'm David Moyes and I have a European final, that's the priority. Um, Yeah, that's the priority. I, there's no way if I was David Moyes, West Ham are safe in the league, that I'm not wrapping up Declan Rice and uh, a couple of the other boys in Cottonwall ahead of the final. Not a hope. I don't care what stick I get. His job's to win something. So 